There are 12 basic principles of animation you need to know about for the exam. This doesn't mean you will necessarily do all of these within Animate, but for the exam, know about these principles and their characteristics. First, we have squash and stretch. This adds a realistic effect to an animation, like when someone is pressing down on an object or, as we see here, a ball stretching as it nears the ground and then squishing when it hits the ground. Overlapping is a type of animation in which you have two or more objects animating at the same time. Look at the character's head move with the ball. That's overlapping. Straight ahead action is animation that works from start to finish, like someone running to catch a train or something of that nature. Animate lends itself more to pose to pose animation, a type of animation in which you build certain points to get to and then animate in between those points. Take another look at this bouncing ball in the actual animate file. We have a starting point, a point in which the ball hits the ground, and another point in which the ball is up here. We will get into the minutia of how Animate does this later. But you see these dots on the timeline? Those are keyframes. Keyframes signify a change in action within an animated movie such as this one. Next we have Anticipation. You can think of it as a pre-motion of sorts. For example, when someone goes to throw a ball, they don't just throw it. There's always a bit of a wind-up, which is the anticipation part of an animation. We watch this and think, oh yes, someone's getting ready to throw a ball. Hence the term anticipation. The other animation principle we see here is follow through. Follow through action is a type of animation in which one piece of an animation triggers others. Think inertia here. Someone pushes a gas pedal, an engine revs, and then the car moves. The car doesn't just move by itself. Someone lets go of a ball. The ball moves. That's follow through. Secondary action is the act of animating parts of a character with the idea that those actions will support the main action. Let me go back to the act of throwing a ball. If the animation of throwing a ball is considered to be a main action, then what is done animation wise to the person? The looking at the target, the wind up, the rearing back, the throw. Those are all secondary actions to support the main animation. Somewhat related to a secondary action is timing. Here's a question to answer when setting up animation. How realistic do you want it to look? The more realistic the animation, the more you want to set up the timing of the parts of the animation to mimic real life as much as possible. For example, for someone winding up to throw a ball, you may delay the timing for added effect, but too much so and it will not seem realistic. Even the slowest of throwers eventually get rid of the ball. On the other end of the realism spectrum, we have exaggeration. You ever see those cartoons where someone gets pulled by the nose and the nose grows forever and ever? That's an example of exaggeration. You can use this as a point of emphasis within an animation, or maybe you want to use this as a teaching tool, as in what not to do in a situation, for example. Staging is the context used to help someone understand an animation. Take a look at this example. The sky turns lighter as the sun rises. In this context, the sky sets the stage for the sun. Slow in and slow out, as you may have guessed, deal with the speed of animation in certain stages. In Animate, we call this easing in and easing out. In this Animate file, we have an example of each. Right now, this is set to ease out. And if I loop this, the ball slows down near the end. If I change this to ease in, the ball is slow at the beginning and speeds up. Part of animation is making sure you choose a realistic option. In throwing a bowling ball down a lane, for example, it slows down near the end of the lane. But drop a bowling ball from the top of a five-story building and believe you me, it's going faster as it nears the ground. I don't recommend you try that in real life, by the way. Next we have arcs, which portray animation over curved lines. The fancy term for this is Bezier interpolation. Think of a ball in the air. Does it really go straight? Hardly. This animation has an arc, which I can easily adjust to put the effect we want on the animation. Solid drawing is listed as an animation concept, even though it is more of a drawing concept. Essentially, it is the idea of making a character or object look good from every angle. Think of a 3D object in 2D space and giving that object weight, character, and balance to make it look more realistic even if it is cartoony. 
The last animation concept we are going to mention is timely appeal. This is the act of strengthening an animation through relating it to the overall story containing the animation. The better the storyboard you create, the easier it will be to find these items to add and configure later. 